Columbia, I think, does one of the best jobs of viewing itself while in the city of New York, really encompassing a global perspective through not only the, the, the nature of its class, but the nature of what is taught. If it weren't for Columbia Business School, I would not have uh, started Compass because my cluster leader was a guy named Cyrus Masumi who founded a company called ZocDoc, which is like open tables for, for doctor appointments. And in seeing what you know, he had, uh, had accomplished, the impact that he had on the company, it made me want to do something similar to not just follow you know, the path to Wall Street, but to be an entrepreneur. Uh, in a corporate setting. The African American leaders, they're paving the path, but paving the path means providing an example for not only African American students or others, but also for the general society to see how African Americans conduct themselves in a business forum, that we indeed can bring brilliance to the table and innovation. Theodore Rutherford was the first black person, the first black woman to get into Columbia Business School. And this is in the 1920s. Her classmates then did not want to study with her. And she finally found a couple of people who were willing to study with her, but they would not eat with her in public. So I can't imagine how alone she must have felt going through a difficult program. And when she received her master's, I believe in accounting, uh, she, unlike her counterparts, uh, wasn't able to use that degree for another 36 years. Um, yet she persevered, yet she signed up for the task, and yet she gave everything that she had to accomplish her goals. If I met her today or then, what would I say to her? I would say, go girl. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the first step. Uh, that she made and it's up to our generation to continue to make that second step which is now create more on-ramps and opportunity into the American economy just not the American education system. You know look at where we are now and look at this huge community that we've built around students of color at CBS and you know look at all the incredible things that individuals are accomplishing while they're at school and when they're graduating and you would be you'd be very proud. Success really starts off very early in your life. I was in seventh grade when I became the first president of a school-run bank. When I was in junior high school, uh, yes, I won a couple of medals in track for my speed and time, but the award that I'm most proud of is the award I won, uh, which was the Hardest Worker Award. I was born in 1959, and that's right on the cusp of the Civil Rights Movement. When I graduated from West Fulton High School, I was determined uh, to go north. I was determined to leave the South, and having been a child of the South and being raised in that red clay of Georgia, I wanted a different experience. I believe as a core value that anything is possible, just anything. And it's just how can you figure it out. Before working for Columbia, before getting a degree here, I spent more than a decade working in the music business one of the things that the folks who have maintained relevancy in the entertainment space is that they have a knack for constantly reinventing themselves. And I think that is something that you can apply to any space. About six months before coming to um, Columbia Business School, I just quit my first job in commercial real estate and I was traveling um, in South America and Central America. I had my best friend and current business partner given me this little deodorant concoction and she told me to just try it and I took it with me. I was really surprised at how well it worked and by the time I started school in September 2014, we were still handcrafting the product and so I, I actually saw a link for Shark Tank. I applied online. Within three days we got a call from someone in LA. After Shark Tank Air. We grew about 1,000% in four weeks. The grit that's required to be successful uh, and to be a successful entrepreneur is taking some risk, 
uh, building out your skill set and frankly proving yourself worthy to mentors who've been successful in the business. And you have the dedication uh, and you're going to bring forth your best efforts to, to make sure that the problems are solved and, and, uh, and that, that you're going to continue to evolve as a, as a professional. Success is defined not by wealth, but by the lives that you touch. All of us stand on the back of others who have come before us. I say 100 thank yous to Sanjanetta Harris because she is one of my mentors and I frequently call on her for advice. And she's also a CVS graduate. Uh, I would have to say back to Martha King Jr. I would say 100 thank yous to Values Partnerships, NAACP, and to my family. I say 100 thank yous to um, Muhammad Ali, Martin Luther King, Vernon Jordan, and Ken Chenault. I know it's four. And Denzel Washington. <laughs> I say 100 thank yous to a CBS alumni, John Newtendall. And John Newtendall, when I was uh, a first year student here, I won an award, had to come back for the summer graduation. It was you know, viewed as a top student for my first year. And he was a keynote speaker. And after they gave me my award, he called me over and said, hey, you have an interesting background. You ever thought about a career in investment banking? And uh, he invited me to his office. And through that conversation at lunch, exposed me to this world that I had no idea existed. And that changed the course and direction of my professional life and career. So 100 thank yous to John. Probably my, my biggest influencer is, is my 10-year-old son who's autistic, um, who doesn't uh, speak a lot, um, Ethan. And um, he has taught me more about patience and perseverance than anyone on this earth.